Good evening, everyone. This is Robert RJL518, welcoming you to another exciting edition of Inside Pitch. The final week of the 1976 pennant race is on the air. Tonight, we pretty much have a playoff game. Pretty much tonight. One team faces elimination. For another team, it's win or they're in. We are at Dodger Stadium on October 1st. It's the San Diego Padres taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Very simple for the Dodgers. Win and they're in. The Padres must win three straight games here in L.A. in order to force a one-game playoff for Thursday. As you take a look at the starting line, as you take a look at the lineup at the standings, and you will see that the Padres are three games back of the Dodgers. So the Padres must win three straight to have a one-game playoff. So actually the Padres have to win three in order to play a fourth. The Dodgers need to win one out of three to eliminate the Padres, and they will be the third-place winners in the National League West and will get them to the playoffs. The rest of the league is pretty much set except for a couple. Depending on what happens on 10-minute ticker tonight, between Oakland, Cal Kansas City, California, Minnesota, and Texas, we'll decide which game we'll play tomorrow night if any one of these major games need to be played. The rest have all been decided. The Yankees are the number one seed in the American League, eight in the American League overall. Cleveland is the four. Boston is the six. California, whoever wins between California, Minnesota, and Texas will, will be the host team for, bought for the Red Sox. The Red Sox are, are the number six locked in. The Pirates have locked in the five, which means that with 83 wins, it's either, we don't know yet who'll be playing, but we have today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. There will be a day off on Thursday if there's no playoff, and which means Friday will start the 1976 postseason. But we got lots yet to go. We, got, we still got three days left tonight to go. The San Diego Padres have a tough lineup tonight to deal with. And they pretty much played a hodgepodge lineup in this game with a hodgepodge pitcher. I will, even though that's how the game goes sometimes when you add some extra playoff teams in there, you never know what to expect. Philip Reynolds, BB, BB, Brian Patterson, and Michael Peterson join us here at Dodger Stadium. And yes, Mr. Wonderful passed away today. Paul Orndorff used to watch him with the WWF many years ago. So we got a big game tonight, Padres and the Dodgers. Dodgers win, they're in. Padres must win three straight. Tough order, but let's see what they got. Starting pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers tonight, Dennis Llewellyn. He was a call-up, one win, one loss, a 2-1-6 ERA. He only pitched 16.2 16, 16 innings, but he gets the call tonight for the Dodgers. So the Dodgers right now have a big difference in pitchers for tonight's game, but somehow that's how it goes when, it, when you play these sometimes. So let's go to the top of the first. Dodger Stadium is packed. They know a win here eliminates the Padres and sends the Dodgers to the postseason. Leading off for the Padres will be center fielder Johnny Grubb. He is in He's in center field tonight, 284 average, five homers, 27 RBIs. Blue and white dice being used for the Dodgers. White die will be red first. They are the home team. Let's start this pretty much it is a playoff game, 4-3. Range play at the park. Dodgers Stadium, 6-2. And we start off with a rare play. Whoa, okay, it's going to be one of those games. 6-2 is a blank, so we go right to the rare play chart. And let's see what we get. That is a 2-1. First baseman chases foul ball into stands. Resolve as a P3 range play. Check for injury to first baseman. Well, that is Steve Garvey. Garvey's range is a 3. Does he make the play? Yes, he does. Now we'll check to see if he's hurt. I doubt it because... He pretty much played in every single game, but we will check. So Grubb fouls out. 
So that's a pop out to third. And Steve Garvey's injury rating is a zero and a one to three. He will be, he will stay in the game. No, Garvey is going to be out of the game. Holy cow. The Dodgers just lost Steve Garvey and a 317 hitter to injury. Oh boy. Garvey is done. Taking over at first base then will be Reggie Smith. I'll put him at first. So what a start for the for the Dodgers. The Dodgers just lost Garvey for the game. So timeout as I go ahead and change a few things in the lineup card. As Reggie Smith will now take over at first base. McGrubb is out. So what a way to start the game. A rare play, and Garvey is injured and out for the game. Next batter for the, for the Padres will be the shortstop, Bill Allman. 246 average, a homer, six RBIs. Llewellyn will pitch. 5-1, I'm sorry, 1-5. That is a, that's a pitcher's result. On a 1, it's an automatic out for either side. The 12 is too high. Allman will swing. 3-2, and that's a fly out to right. The Dodgers historically won this game 8-1. to one. Nine, They had 19 hits and two errors combined between the two. Next batter for the Padres, left fielder Jerry Turner. 267 average, five homers, 37 RBIs. Yes, he didn't know about Paul Orndorff. Yeah, he passed away. 74. Five, I think. Llewellyn with the pitch. 6-5. That is a strikeout. Nine. He got him. Struck him out. Dodger Stadium subtracts one from strikeouts and one from walks. Turner will have to go back to the bench. And it is a 1-2-3 inning for the on the Padres. That's the first strikeout for Llewellyn. He actually had four of them that year. So that's a way to start for the Dodgers. We go to the bottom of the first inning, starting pitcher for the San Diego Padres, September call-up and a fringe pitcher, Bob Ochinko. No wins, two losses, a 16.62 ERA. Normally, I would let him immediately try to get to see if he can get to his tired result, but because this game actually means something when this game actually didn't mean anything back in the day, I will keep Ochenko on a short leash. Leading off for the Dodgers will be second baseman Davey Lopes. 241 average, four homers, 20 RBIs. Keith White joins us here at Dodger Stadium. Ochenko with the pitch. 6-2. That's a walk. That's 17 Will walk Lopes. Yep, he walked him. He walked him. Dodger Stadium minus one to walks, and that is definitely against the lefty. That is a walk, and Lopes will take down to first. Next batter will be the shortstop, Bill Russell. 274 average, five homers, 65 RBIs. Infield is at double play depth. That is an 11. Lopes does have a steal attempt, and I'm going to send him. He has a 17, nothing from Ochinko, and Fred Kendall is the pick, is the catcher for the for the Padres, and he has a zero arm. So Lopes is going to try for second, a one to 17. He makes it, and he does. Slides in there safely, safe by a step or two, and a stolen base for Lopes. Lopes had very good speed. We'll see now if anything again happening on the bases. Uh, he would need a five to try to steal third. He doesn't get it, and he'll stay put. Ochenko will pitch to Russell, and that's a 6-6. Six, six. Strikeout six. No, too high. Russell will swing. Three, five. That's going to be a ground ball to second base. The throw will go to first for out number one, and Lopes will go to third. So the first out there on Russell, a ground out to second. May just be the opener. Yeah, well, no, nah, he was. He, he, this was this was during the time when the opener and followers didn't exist yet. And I'll be on. And I'll be honest with you. I do not like doing bullpen games. 
Here's left fielder Billy Buckner, 301 average, seven homers, 60 RBIs. The infield is in. Ochenko, let's see, a 10. Nothing happening with Lopes at third. Ochenko will go ahead and pitch. One, five, strikeout, six, no. He's getting the strikeout results, but he's not getting the batter out. Buckner will swing. Six, two, that's going to be a fly ball to right field. Going to be a fly out to right. Out number two, Buckner sacrificed fly rating of two. He does not bring Lopes in automatically. Lopes will try himself. Three, base runner. Fly ball to right. Bobby Valentine is there. He has a plus one arm. A one to four for Lopes to score. And he does it. He stays at third. Wow, he couldn't bring him in. It must not have been shallow, too deep enough. And Lopes stays at third. And there are two outs now. That will bring up the third baseman, the Penguin, Ron Say. 277 average, 23 homers, 80 RBIs. Can the Padres get out of this inning not giving up anything with a pitcher like Ochenko on the mound? Pitch. Actually, it should be rolling a strat roll. We will. That is a six. Nothing happening. Ochenko with the pitch. 5-1. That's a base hit right up the middle, and there's your first run. A 5-1 is a single one given up by Ochenko, and Lopes will trot home to score, and just like that, one nothing Dodgers. He has a number of single ones on his matrix, hence the 16-6-2 ERA. So a base hit for Ron Say, and he'll break in a run. And one nothing Dodgers, Steeler fan and world's worst gamer joins us here at Dodgers Stadium. Was watching a replay of the year games, but live is better. <laughs> so I've been told. Say on it first already, one nothing Dodgers. Coming up is the first baseman, Reggie Smith. He takes over for Steve Garvey, who left the game injured, but he'll be back, of course, for the playoffs. Now, in the playoffs, I do do injuries, so I do injuries, so it does make a difference. Two outs now. We'll see if anything happening with Say. 12 means no. Ochinko will pitch. 2-5, and that's going to be a base hit right up the middle. Another single. Say's base running rating is a 2. He will have, becomes a 3 with two outs, and he will have to hold it second. As I said, I'm going to keep Ochinko on a short leash. This game does mean something because when this game was historically played, it didn't. Their division was already decided. Next batter will be right fielder Leon Lacey, otherwise known as Lee Lacey. 269 average, three homers, 34 RBIs. Still two outs. Can Ochenko get out of this inning only giving up a run? That is an eight. Nothing happening there. Ochenko will go ahead and pitch. 5-2. Nope, that's a base hit right up the middle. That's a single. That is a single, and that single one will score Say from second. He will come in to score. Reggie Smith's base running rating is a four. He will make third. So a base hit for Leon Lacey. Three straight hits. And the Dodgers now lead it 2 nothing. Next batter for the Dodgers will be Glenn Burke. Burke is in center field, a September call-up. 239 average and 5 RBIs. So Ochenko now has given up two runs here. Runners at first and third. His pull rating is 12. Let me see here. 1, 2, 4. Five, six. Like I said, I got to play it a little differently here for the Padres due to a pitcher with a 16-6-2 ERA. Ochenko will pitch to Burke. We'll see if anything on the strat. That is an 18. No. Ochenko goes ahead and pitches. 6-2. That's a walk. The 18. No. Burke will swing. 3-6. And he grounds it to third. And the throw goes to second to get Lacey. And the inning is over. And that is probably the best thing that can happen there. 
two runs on three hits, a walk, and a stolen base. Dodgers are already up 2 nothing here after one. Stadium cheers. EA! Very simple. For the Dodgers, win and they're in. And they will go to Pittsburgh to play the wild card playoff game. It's up to the Padres. They have to win three straight. Bobby Valentine leads off for San Diego. He is in right field for this game. 367 average, four RBIs. He was a September call-up, a young Bobby Valentine. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. 5-6, that's a possible error. Valentine, 2-5. That's going to be a base hit to right field for Valentine. The ball is hit to right. That is Lacey. His error rating is a 10. That's an 11. He will not make the error, and Valentine will hold it first. Valentine comes away with a hit there. And the next batter will be the first baseman, Mike Ivey. 291 average, 7 homers, 70 RBIs that year. Infield goes to double play depth. Runner on first. I really don't think Valentine's going to do anything with a 5. No. Llewellyn getting ready to pitch to Ivey. Can the Padres get a run in? 4-1. That's blank. Ivy will swing. 1-1. One, one. Nope, that's a ground ball to short. Did they turn the double play? 2. Minus 2 is 0, plus 1. And the second baseman is Lopes, and he has a 0 from an arm. The only way they turn a double play is on a 1. No, Valentine will be out at second easily, and Ivy is safe at first on the fielder's choice. Man on first, now one out. Here's the third baseman, Doug Rader, 257 average, nine homers, 55 RBIs. Beatles eternally joins us here at Dodgers Stadium. Talking about Eleanor Rigby. As I always try to name a Beatles song every time you show up. A different one. Ivy on at first, Rader at the plate. There is a, let's see if anything happening on the strategy roll. The 13 says no. Llewellyn will go ahead and make the pitch. 6-1. That's an automatic out. And that's going to be a fly out to right. Out number two. Maybe a little unfair today in this game that you got a pitcher with a 2-16 ERA against a pitcher 16-62 ERA uh, because this game really didn't mean anything. But, hey, it could have been the other way around. Here's Fred Kendall, the catcher. Kendall, 246 average, two homers, 39 RBIs. The infield is now back. Nothing happening with Ivy. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. 4-4, four, four, that's a blank. Kendall will swing the bat. 1-3, and he flies out the left, and that will end the inning. No runs, a hit for the Padres, but it is still 2-0. Dodgers win, they're in. Padres win, they live another day for tomorrow. They must win three in a row. Not the first time some not the first time in one of my uh in one of my replays, uh, some team had to win three in a row and win it and take a division or win a playoff game. Isn't that right, Steeler fan 1933? I'm pretty sure Matt would love to tell you about my 1994 season restart in payoff pitch. Tenacious Sports joins us here at Dodger Stadium. We have Earl here. Always an honor when he comes through the turnstiles. We go to the bottom of the second. We'll see if Ochenko can have a better inning, but he is on a short lease. The catcher, Steve Yeager, is up. He's 214 average, 11 homers. 35 RBIs. Jaeger actually played in this game for the Dodgers. Ochenko. Here's the pitch. 3-5. That's a possible error. Jaeger will swing. 1-6. That's going to be a slow rolling grounder to third base. That's picked up by 
That's picked up by Doug Rader. Jaeger has a base running rating of two. A one to two, he's safe at first. No. Nice pick up there by Raider. Throws to first and gets Jaeger out. One down. There is no error on S1 to S6. Error EGs and E's are not used. So Jaeger grounds out to third. That will bring up the pitcher, Dennis Llewellyn. He doesn't have his own pitcher card, so he uses the Dodger hitting card. 059 average and and one RBI for the remaining Dodger pitchers that don't have a card. Ochenko will pitch. 3-5. That again comes up as an error. Pitcher on the wet pitcher. 1-3. That is a ground ball to the short the shortstop. And that is hit to Bill Allman. His error rating is a 10. That's a 14. He's got it. Throws to first out number two. Believe it or not, hitting the error rating for Ochenko is not a bad thing. Made probably not a bad thing. So we'll ground out to short, and that will bring up Lopes. Lopes uh, walked his first time up and stole a base. Ochenko trying to get through this. If he reaches his tired rating, I will automatically pull him. Ochenko with the pitch. 6-3. Strikeout four. Got him. Struck out Lopes. Six minus one is five, and he got him. Struck him out. Strikeout number one for Ochenko. And the Dodgers go one, two, three. Nice job. And after two, it is two nothing Dodgers. Can I just get the Padres through Ochenko at least as batters without giving up too many runs to give the Padres a chance? We go to the top of the third inning with the Dodgers leading 2-0 here. The Dodgers win. They are in the playoffs. Leading off for the Padres, second baseman Mike Champion, 237 average, a homer, two RBIs. The sad thing, as I said, for the Padres, they have a hodgepodge lineup here in a game they must win. But them's the break sometimes when I, when I add some extra playoff teams, and that's okay. Llewellyn will pitch. One, three, strikeout, six, no, the stadium prevents it. Champion swings, one, two, base hit to left field for Champion. He gets a single. Lead off hit for Champion, and he will go to first. Ochenko does not have his own pitcher, his own batting card, obviously. So that will bring up the pitcher, Bob Ochenko, 037 average, and I'm going to call an automatic bunt. So the corners are in. He will bat. He will bat for the simple reason is I would not, he would normally would not be pulled for a pinch hitter yet, even though this game was, didn't mean anything and was played. I will still roll a strategy roll. 16, champion, not stealing. So Bob Ochenko will lay down the bunt automatically as I do call automatic bunts for pitchers if necessary. Llewellyn with the pitch. 1-3, strikeout, 16. Strikeouts are halved. 19 minus 1 is eight. Is 18. Divided by 2 is 9. No strikeout. Ochenko will get to bunt. And that is a bunt batted to the first baseman. The corners are in, so his bunt rating now becomes a 3. That is a 19, and that is going to be butted too hard. That is butted too hard, and we got to see if it's a double play. Oh, no. Ground ball double play, though, is zero. Minus two, and the, so there's not going to be a double play. The question is, who's out? Now, on a uh, here's who's out. Um, with the infield in, uh, a one or two, champion will make it to second, three, four, five. Ochenko, on a one, two, or six, champion advances to second. No, it is a three. So the ball was bunted too hard to first. They threw to second to get champion, but they could not get the double play. So Ochenko makes it to first, and there is one out. He bunted it too hard. 
Tough play for Ochenko, but it'll have to be at first base. The batter now will be Johnny Grubb. Grubb, let's see here. So that goes as a fielder's choice. Grubb is 0 for 1. And now the double play is called. The Wallen will go ahead and pitch. I don't, and there's no need to, there's no need to roll a strategy roll on this one because Ochenko can't be involved in anything, and Llewellyn has no pickoff rating. So we'll go straight to the pitch. 2-2, two, two, that's a range play. Can Grubb hit it somewhere? 5-2, that is going to be a fly ball to left field. That's hit to Buckner, and that's who you want to hit to if you're a Dodger fan. A 1-5, to five, it's an out. Yes, he'll make the catch, out number two, and Ochenko will stay where he's at. So Buckner goes ahead and makes the catch. Excellent range out there in 1976. Here's Bill Allman. Allman is 0 for 1. So two outs. Infield is now normal. Can Allman make a play? Let's see if anything happening on the bases. Nope. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch to Allman. One, two, that's a blank. Llewellyn is not tired. Allman will swing. One, three, and that's going to be a fly out to center, and that will end the inning. No runs, a hit for the Padres. We go to the bottom of the third, two-nothing Dodgers. Dodgers win. They clinch, the, they clinch third place in the National League West, and they will go to Pittsburgh for the National League wild card playoff game which will be held either Friday or Saturday, depending on what happens in the American League. Bottom of the third, 2 nothing here. Ochenko, I'm going to go with him. I've got to see if he can keep on going here. Bill Russell leads off for the Dodgers. He's 0 for 1. Ochenko just has to try to get out, try to reach his, his fatigue rating, and then I'll take him out. Ochenko with the pitch. 1-5, strikeout, 12, no. Russell will swing. 4-4, four, four, that's a fly out to right. And that is out number one. One man down, here's Bill Buckner. Buckner is 0 for 1. Ochenko gets set and ready to deal. 2-1, that's a walk, that 8, nope, that's too high. Buckner will swing. 3-1, and against the lefty, that's a ground ball to second base. Taken care of there by Champion. Throws to first out, number two. Ground ball to second. The next batter will be the Penguin, Ron Say. Say is one for one. Hit a single his first time up. Ochenko will pitch to Say. This will be his 13th batter. Ochenko will pitch. 1-6. That is a pitcher's result. That's going to be a 4, and it doesn't matter which side. That's a base hit up the middle, and Say has his second hit of the game. Two base hits for Ron Say. He'll hold it first. Next batter is Reggie Smith, who comes in for the injured Steve Garvey, who's just out for the rest of the game. And Smith is one for one. And this is Ochenko's 14th batter, which means after this, I can replace him if I wish to. I mean, only giving up, only down 2 nothing, and I can bring in a decent Padre pitcher. And I can bring in a starter as long as they have a relief appearance before the fifth in, before the sixth inning. Anything happening would say no. Ochenko will go ahead and pitch to Smith. 3-2. That's an error on a grounder. Smith, 4-6. And that's going to be a fly ball to right field. And there, of course, won't be an error there. And that side is retired. No runs a hit for the Dodgers. Bob Ochenko gives up two runs in three innings. He has reached his fatigue result. And he has done the job as far as I'm concerned. He gave up two runs. After three, it is two nothing Dodgers. In my opinion, that's excellent. He got away with a lot today, too. But this game's not over yet by any means. Top of the fourth inning coming up. 
Leading off for the Padres will be Jerry Turner. Turner is 0 for 1. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch to Turner. 6-3. That's a range play. Turner will swing. 1-2. That's a double to right field, but it is a range play. And out there is Lee Lacey. Lacey's range is a four. Does he take a double away from Turner? Yes, he does. And Turner can't believe it. Out number one. And that is a big play on a fly out to right. Oh, that took maybe a possible run off the off the board. One out. What a play by Lacey. Here's Bobby Valentine. Valentine is one for one as a single. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. 5-3. That's a walk. That 12 will walk Valentine. He'll drop down to first. Valentine on base for the second time tonight. And that is the first walk issued by Llewellyn. He had six walks in 76. Double play depth. And the next batter will be Ivy. Ivy is 0 for 1. Valentine not a stealing threat at all. And the 10 agrees with me there. Tenacious Sports talking about Solitaire Stratomatic, and of course he is doing a History Maker baseball product, which I think he does very, very well as I watch his History Maker baseball. Sometimes I don't say anything there, Earl. I just lurk and just listen and just listen to you roll dice. History Maker baseball is excellent, and I still think of getting a copy of it and the franchise All-Stars. That's it. No seasons. Seasons are to be done with inside pitch. Llewellyn will pitch. 5-1. That's a walk. 19, no. Ivy swings. 1-3. Base hit right past the shortstop. That will be a single. Valentine's base running rating of 1 has no chance to make third. He'll stop at second. And now the Padres are in business. Runners at first and second now for Doug Rader. Raider is 0 for 1. One out here. Fans here at Dodger Stadium know what's at stake for the Dodgers. The Padres know what's at stake for them as well. Runners at first and second. Let's see if anything happening on the strat. Nope. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. 3-4. That's a home run chance. Raider a righty. A 1-18. to The 16 passes. Against a right-hander, Raider has a 13. A 1-13 to Raider just put the Padres in front. Yes, kaboom! It is a 9. That ball is high. That ball is hit deep to right field as Raider goes ahead and hits the opposite way. And that is gone. Home run, Doug Raider, a three-run jack. And the Padres have life. A three-run homer by Doug Rader puts the Padres ahead three to two. Stadium groans. Ugh. Doug Llewell Dennis Llewellyn pitched Raider a meatball. He put the Parmesan on it and turned it into lasagna. It is gone. Three to two Padres on a three-run jack by Raider. And still one out here on the top of the fourth. Here's Fred Kendall. Kendall is 0 for 1. So you mean to tell me that Bob Ochenko will be leaving the game with a chance to get the win? Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. 3-6. That's an automatic out. And that's going to be a fly out to center. Two away. Two men down. The batter now will be champion. Champion had a single his last time up. He's one for one. Llewellyn goes set and ready to deal. He will pitch to champion. 
Llewellyn, 4-6. Remember, white dies being read first with the Dodgers having the white up top. 4-6. That's a strikeout. The 8. That's not happening. Champion will swing the bat. And that is a 4-1. And he flies out the left. And that will end the inning. Three runs on two hits. A three-run bomb by Raider. The Padres have a 3-2 lead. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Bob Ochenko has reached his fatigue rating. That does allow me to take him out, and I will. The Padres will now go to the bullpen early. Let's see who they're going to want to bring in here. And it is the fourth inning, so I can bring in somebody that's pretty good. Let's see who leads off. Right, right, right. The Dodgers have three right-handers coming up. So, ooh, why not? We'll go ahead and go with it. Coming on to pitch for the Padres will be Rick Sawyer. Five wins, three losses, a 2-5-3 ERA. He only had two relief appearances, but that's good enough. He was more of a starter, and he's got a batting card, as a matter of fact, so i got to replace that because he may be in there batting for a little bit. So give me a moment while I go ahead and take care of that and put him in the batting, put him in the batting order because he is due to lead off. Timeout on the field real quick as I clean up the Clean up the cards. There we go. All right. So Rick Sawyer will come on and pitch for the Padres. Five and three, two, five, three ERA. He'll be the second Padre pitcher. Leading off for the Dodgers will be Lacey. Lacey hit a single his last time up, one for one. Sawyer can pitch to 15 batters. Question is, will he? I don't know, but we'll find out. Sawyer will pitch. 5-5. Five, five. That's a blank. Lacey will swing the bat. 3-4. That's a ground ball to second base. Up with it to first. Nice play there by Champion. Out number one. One man down. The batter will be Glenn Burke. Burke is 0-1. for 1. Sawyer. Gee, Puck joins us here at Dodger Stadium. Do Sawyer will pitch to Burke. 3-3. Three, three. That's a blank. Burke will swing the bat. 6-3. And that's going to be a ground out to second base as well. Again played by Champion, who throws to first for out number two. Here's Steve Yeager. Yeager is 0-1. for 1. Pine Tar Baseball is an awesome baseball game. Absolutely. Just, just watch uh, Al Red Sox fan play it. Kurt Berglund may have created it, but Al Red Sox fan makes it shine. Just like Anthony did Glory Days, does Glory Day, creates Glory Days Boxing, uh, Al Red Sox fan makes Glory Days Boxing shine. Sawyer will pitch. 6-3, strikeout 12. Yes, got him. Struck out Jaeger, and the Dodgers go one, two, three. Nice job by Sawyer to come in here and get that. And after four, it's three to two. Friars. Could the Padres pull off a huge upset tonight to keep their playoff hopes alive? They must win three in a row. We go to the top of the fifth. Rick Sawyer is going to come out to bat, 208 average, and might as well. So Rick had 208 that year for in 1976. So Sawyer will bat. Llewellyn is the batter, is the pitcher, 28. He's still got some left in him. <coughs> Let's see here. That there. Okay. Top of the fifth. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. Two, three. That's a wild pitch. Ball one. Do it again. Four, five. That's an error on a throw. Sawyer with the swing. Six, four. That's going to be a ground ball to first base. That's it to Ivy. Ivy's error rating is a three. That's an 18. I'm sorry, not Ivy. To, to Smith. Smith's error rating is a nine. That's an 18. He's got it. And he'll toss it to Llewellyn for the out. Out number one. Who covers the bag? Q 
Keep on forgetting who's in the field sometimes. Here's Johnny Grubb. Grubb is 0 for 2. Llewellyn goes ahead and makes the pitch. 6-6. Six, six, that's a blank. Grubb will swing. 4-3. And that's a ground ball to short. And that's out number 2. Two away. Catch you later there, Earl. Catch you on the, catch you on the flip side. Keep on rolling, my brother. Here's Bill Allman. Allman is 0 for 2. Lawallen, go ahead and getting set and ready to deal. That's a 4-3. That's a range play at the park. Dodger Stadium, 3-3. That's grounded to second base. That's it to Lopes. That is a range play. Lopes has a range of 3. Nope, that's going to get by him. That will be a single for Bill Allman. He'll get the first. First hit of the game for Allman. He'll get there. It will give Turner a chance. He's 0 for 2. Allman does have a stealing threat. May do it. That is a 14, but that's too high. So no steal. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. 5-6. Possible error. Turner. 3-4. That's a fly ball to center field. That is hit to Burke. Burke's error rating is a 6. That's a 17. He'll make the catch and retire the side. No runs, one hit for the Padres. We go to the bottom of the fifth, three to two, in favor of the Friars in a game they absolutely cannot lose. Zalapsky Smurf joins us here at Dodger Stadium. Welcome, ZS. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome to the channel. We go to the bottom of the fifth, Rick Sawyer. And leading off is the pitcher, Dennis Llewellyn, using the pitcher card, pitcher batting card. Um, am I going to let him swing here? Uh, it's a fifth inning. He can't pitch to 28 batters. Uh, let's see. He's pitched right now to 20. He's pitched to 21. I'll let him swing. I don't think they take him out yet, although it is three to two. Sawyer will make the pitch. Five four. That's a strikeout, and that eight or and actually is on the cusp of eight or twenty. It won't matter. The pitcher's card is a twenty-eight. That's a strikeout, no matter which way you rate it, and it's one out. Top of the order for the Dodgers. Here's Davy Lopes. Lopes is zero for one. Sawyer will go ahead and deal. 1-4. Hit by pitch. 8-0. No. Lopes will swing. 2-2. Two, two, base hit right past the shortstop in the, in the left center for a single. Lopes will hold it first. And Lopes a definite stealing threat. Bill Russell is the batter. Lopes has a 7-11 chance to steal. And... That is a one, and I'm going to send him. Lopes is going to try to steal, get in the scoring position. Stolen base rating is 17. Minus two is 15. Kendall has a zero. One to 15. No, Lopes is thrown out at second base by Fred Kendall. Oh, wow. Caught stealing. Two outs. And I can't believe that landed on the 18. And it got him. Davey Lopes cut down at second by Fred Kendall. And now Russell will bat with nobody on base. Sawyer with the pitch. 3-3, three, three, that's a blank. Russell will swing, 1-6. That's hit to left field, and that is a 10. And against a righty, that is way too high. And that's just going to be a fly out the left and end the inning. No runs, a hit for the Dodgers. After five, the Padres lead this three to two. Top of the sixth inning. Leading off for the Friars will be Bobby Valentine. Valentine is one for one, has a single and walk. Dodger bullpen getting ready, but they feel they can go with Llewellyn for at least an inning or more. 
And that is Sewer Dice. I will re-roll that. 2-1. That's at the park. Dodger Stadium will say 6-6. Six, six. And that is a ball hit to center field for a base hit. It is a single plus, though. Valentine run, running around first. He's going to try for second because he must on an S+. plus. His base run rating is a 1. Center fielder for the Dodgers is Burke, and he has a plus one arm. So a 1-2, to two, Valentine will make it to second. No. Oh, boy. Is he out? Is he out a plus one? On a plus one arm, a one or two, Valentine is out at second. And no, he turns around and goes back to first on a three. But that is a base hit for Valentine. He almost made a mistake, but he stayed, but he stops at first base. He saw the ball coming in and he decided, nope, I'll stay where I'm at and be happy with it. Here's Mike Ivy. Ivy is one for two. Infield double play depth. Anything on the strategy? 17, no. Llewellyn will pitch. 2 5. That's a strikeout. The 18, no. Ivy. 5 5. Base hit to left field. That is a single for Ivy. Bobby Valentine's base running rating is a one. Ball hit to left, minus two. Makes him a minus one. Buckner has a minus one arm. Valentine can only get to second, and he'll stay there. And the Padres are in business with two men on and no outs in the top of the sixth. Here's Doug Rader, and Dodger Stadium crowd gives him a few boos. Rumor has it the suits at RJL told the brass and inside pitch to make sure this comes down to last. <laughs> Here's Doug Raider. Raider is one for two. He blasted a three-run bomb his last time up that put the Padres up three to two. Llewellyn will set no half the deal here. See if anything happening with the strategy. The three is a no. Llewellyn will pitch. See if he pitches him another bad one. Three, four. He does. Oh, my God. He does it again. Three, four, a home run chance. Raider a righty, a one to 18, and he just got it. He clears it. Against the righty, Raider has a 13. Does Raider hit a second three-run bomb? No! Oh, a 14. He just missed his second homer. But he does get to swing. 5-1, and that's just going to be a fly out the right. Oh, Raider misses a second one. Fly out the right. Bobby Valentine with a base running rating of one will stay at second, and that's out number one. Raider thought he had it. He thought he had his six RBIs today. Here's Fred Kendall. Kendall is 0 for 2. Infield still a double play depth. Strategy roll says an 18, no. Llewellyn will go ahead and pitch. 5-4, error on a grounder. Kendall, 4-1, that is a ground ball to short. That ball is hit to Russell. Russell's error rating is a 10, that's a 13. He won't make an error. Let's see if they turn the double play. 3, 1, 2. And the second baseman, Lopes, is a 0. A 1-2, to two, they turn the double play. No, they don't. Valentine makes it to third. Ivy cut down at second. Kendall makes first. Two outs. But that's what happens when you don't turn those double plays. You got to turn those double plays. Because all you do, you give a team another chance to get a hit. Next up is Mike Champion with two outs now. Champion one for two. Runners at first and third. Strategy roll says nothing happening. Wallen will go ahead and pitch to champion. 1-4. That's an automatic out. It'll get him out of the inning, and that's going to be a fly out to right, and that will do it. Wow. A big chance by the for the Padres goes by the board. No runs. 
on two hits. And Raider misses a second home run by one number. Three to two going into the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning, three to two. Bill Buckner leads off for the for the Dodgers. This Rick Sawyer is due to bat first in the top of the seventh inning. This may be his last inning, although he still has some batters he can face. But this may be his last inning. Sawyer will pitch to Buckner. Five five blank. Buckner takes the swing, 6-5, base hit to right field. Dodgers have the tying run aboard. Single for Buckner, and he will hold it first. And now the batter is Ron Say. Say is two for two. He has two singles. Infield double play depth. Buckner has speed. That is a four, and he does have a chance to steal, but with Say at the plate, I'm not going to call it. He would have a 1-13 to 13 chance to do it. I'm going to let Say swing because Say is going to hit can hit home runs no matter who's on the mound. Sawyer will pitch. 3-6, strikeout 7. Yes, got him. Struck him out. He gets Say. Say against the right. He's an 8, minus 1 is a 7, and he got him. That's a big K. Next up is Reggie Smith. Smith is one for two. Came in for the injured Gar Garvey. Buckner on it first. Now if a steal comes up, I may do it. Not this time. Sawyer will go ahead and pitch. Five, six. Walk plus. That 20 is going to be too high. He will not walk Smith. He doesn't walk him. Smith will swing. 2-5. That's a ground ball to third. Do they turn the double play? 2-0-3. Second base champion is a zero. Second base champion is a zero. And that will be a 1-3 to three to turn it. And they don't. Buckner will be thrown out at second. Smith makes it to first. And that is out number two. So, fielder's choice for Smith. And next batter is Leon Lacey. Lacey is one for four. I'm oh, sorry, one, one, one for four. One for two. Sawyer will pitch to Lacey. Smith on it first now. Nothing happening on the bases, and Lacey is not funny. Three to two. Two out. Sawyer with the pitch. 3-6. That's a strikeout. 11. No, not happening. Lacey swings. 5-3. Fly ball to right field. That will be caught by Valentine. And the inning is over. No runs and a hit for the Dodgers. After 6, 3-2 Padres trying to pull off the upset here tonight to keep their season alive. We go to the top of the seventh inning. Leading off for the Padres is supposed to be Rick Sawyer. That's going to be it for him. They will take him out. Padres will go to the bench. And coming on to pinch hit will be Tito Fuentes. 263 average, two homers, 36 RBIs. Well done by Rick Sawyer to keep it a 3-2 lead. But right now, Bob Ochenko can get the win if the Padres hold this score. Question is, do I want Llewellyn to pitch? Um, yeah, I do. Llewellyn will pitch to Fuentes. Llewellyn is due to bat third in the bottom of the seventh. This probably will be his last inning. Llewellyn, 4-5. That's an error on a throw. Fuentes... 1-3, and that's going to be a ground ball to short. Ground ball to short. That's hit to Russell. Russell's error rating is a 10. That's a 14. He won't make an error, and he'll throw the first to get the out. Wow, lots of error chances tonight, but none occurring. 
So one ground out to short. The next batter is Grub. Grub is 0 for 3. One out, top of the seventh. Llewellyn, 5-1. That's a walk. Nine, yes, that will walk Grub. Oh, boy, another runner on for the Padres. And that is the second walk issued by Dennis Llewellyn. And now a chance for Allman. Allman is one for three, singled his last time up. Double play depth is called. Grubb, not really a stealing threat. And that four will not allow anything. Llewellyn will pitch to Allman here. They would love to see if he can get through the inning. Three to two. Llewellyn with the pitch. Four, three. Range play at the park. Dodger Stadium says 2-1. That's a fly ball to center field. That's it to Burke. Burke's range is a two. Does he make the play out there? No. Is that going to be a single or a double? It's going to be a double for Bill Allman as he hits it over Burke's head. Will that score Grubb? Base running rating is two. Base running rating is two. Plus one for double to center is three. And Burke has a plus one arm of four. A one to four. Grubb will score. No, he holds it third. Wow, a lot of close runs in this game. A lot of close rolls. Grubb will hold at third base. As he'll stay put there. But Allman has a double. And runners in second and third with one out. And the batter now is Jerry Turner, and that's going to be it for the wall, and he has reached his fatigue inning, his fatigue batter. He is done. So that will be it for Dennis Llewellyn, as now a fatigue will automatically bring a base runner in, and they're going to bring the infield in, and we'll see a new pitcher. And I think they'll bring in a righty. There are two righties following Turner. So let's see who the... Let's see who they want to bring in. It is the seventh inning. They can bring in a reliever if they want, a main reliever, which I think they will do. And I don't like any of the relievers they have. Ugh. I don't think they would bring him in here yet. Not, I don't think so. Coming on to pitch for the Dodgers will be Elias Sosa. Six wins, eight losses, four saves, a 4-4-3 four, four, ERA. As he is really one of the only pitchers that has. Well, do I want to You know what? You know what? No, I'll save Sosa. I'll take him back. And instead, I'm going to go with the best pitcher that's available without Charlie Huff. And that's going to be Stan Wall. So coming on to pitch for the Dodgers instead will be Stan Wall. Wall, two wins, two losses, a save, a 3-6-0 ERA. Stan Wall will come in and pitch to Turner and Valentine and Ivy possibly. Infield is in. And, yeah, infield is in. And they will pitch to Turner. Big at bat here for the Padres and the Dodgers. Runners at second and third. Am I rolling the strategy? Yes. Nothing. Wall will pitch to Turner. 3-4. That's a wild pitch. That 17 is too high. Ball one. Wow. And Wall did not have any wild pitches, but he did have a couple of pass balls. Ball one. Wow. Stan Wall better be careful with that. And I know for a fact Jaeger jumped up and said, hey, look, we're trying to clinch a playoff spot here tonight. Wall will do it again. 6-3. And against the lefty, that's an automatic out. What is it? It's going to be a fly ball to left field. That's out number two. Turner sacrifice fly rating of two. Does he bring in Grubb? No, not that way. Grubb's base running rating is a two. Fly out to left is Buckner has a minus one arm. So, a, so Grubb can only score on a one. No, he stays at third, two outs. Wow. Turner could not hit it deep enough. 
and could not bring in Grubb. Two down. As the Dodger faithful leave a sigh of relief, Bobby Valentine is next. Valentine having a good night tonight. Two for two with a walk. Hey, you know what? Who won Who won the World Series in 1985 in my channel? I don't want to hear it. All minute second. Grub at third. Wall will pitch. Actually, I should roll strategy roll first because I have to roll. 19, no, because Wall does have a pickoff chance. Wall with the pitch. 5-1. Range play. Valentine. 1-6. It's a fly ball to right field. That's it to Lacey. Lacey's range is a four. Does the Dodgers get out of this inning? Yes, he does. Lacey makes the catch. Side retired. No runs. One hit. And a walk. In a game that means everything to the pot to both teams. For the Dodgers, they win tonight. They go to they will go to Pittsburgh for the playoffs. Padres win tonight. They live, they live to play another game tomorrow. Seventh inning stretch. Three to two. We'll be right back. Sing, take me out to the ball game. Don't forget, we have 10-minute ticker coming up tonight. Tomorrow's game has not been decided yet, depending upon the ticker. The three games that, are, in my opinion, are available are Minnesota at Kansas City, California at Oakland, or the Padres and the Dodgers tomorrow night. Those are the three games I'm looking at, depending on what the ticker says, will be the decision I will make after the ticker. 1985 was not rigged. Just <laughs> uh, You and your Astros. Bottom of the seventh inning, leading off for the Dodgers will be Glenn Burke. They got right, right coming up, so I think the Padres will bring in a right-hander here. Let's see who they want, and... Uh, This game means a lot, and I'm going to use them. Coming on to pitch for the Padres will be Dave Frazlebin, who had 10 relief appearances in uh, 1976. We usually had him as a starter, but he's going to come in in relief. Dave Frazlebin, 10 wins, 13 losses, save a 3-5-1 ERA. I can make a few decisions here depending on how, on what this game means three to two Padres bottom of the seventh Burke is up he's 0 for two phrase Lebin four three strikeout nine got him struck him out phrase Lebin gets Burke on a K out number one Next batter will be State Steve Yeager. See that guy's name three times in a row and see how you do. I know, right? Yeager is 0 for 2. Fraze Lebin will go ahead and deal. 2-4. That's at the park. Dodger Stadium says. Dodger Stadium says 5-5. Five, five, and that's going to be a fly ball to center field. And that will be out number two. Two men down, and that will see the pitcher. And Stan Wall is coming out of the game. The Dodgers will go to the bench. And it will be Dusty Baker coming up to bat. He will pinch it. Dusty Baker, 242 average. Four homers, 39 RBIs. Two outs, bottom of the seventh. Baker now batting. Frazlebin with the pitch. 
for one. Strikeout seven. Yep, got him. Struck out Baker. What a great job of Frazelman as he strikes out two of the batters. One, two, three, go the Dodgers. And the Padres still lead three to two after seven. We go to the top of the eighth inning. The Padres have Mike Ivey coming up to bat. Right, right, right. Let's see who the Dodgers want to bring out to pitch. <clears throat> the Dodgers are going to bring out Charlie Huff. He's the closer, but he's their best reliever to pitch the eighth and possibly the ninth. Charlie Huff, 12 wins, 8 losses, 18 saves, a 2-2-1 ERA. And since the pitcher just batted, he had can pitch the number of batters. Charlie Huff against Mike Ivey, top of the eighth, 3-2. to two. Padres trying to pull off an upset here. Huff with the pitch. 5-3, strikeout 10, no. Ivey swings. 4-2, fly out the right. Ivy is now 2-4. for four. He has two singles tonight. <clears throat> and that is out number one. Doug Rader is the next batter. He is 1-3. for three. Rader just missed his second home run his last time up. But he has a bomb tonight. He's 1-3, for three, a three-run jack, which is, the, which is the difference in the game. Huff will make the pitch. 4-1, strikeout, 8, yes, got him. Struck him out, and there are two away. Two outs, and the batter will be Fred Kendall. Kendall is 0-3. Huff looking on, ready to pitch. 5-5, five, five. against a righty, that's an automatic out. And it's going to be a ground out to second base. Up with it is Lopes, throws to first. One, two, three, go the Friars. Three to two, going into the bottom of the eighth inning. Dave Frazelbin will pitch. He can pitch to three more batters before tiring. So he will pitch. The Padres do have Metzger getting ready to go ahead and close the game in the ninth. Bottom of the eighth, three to two. Top of the order, though, for the Dodgers and Davey Lopes. Lopes is one for two, singled, stole a base, and walked. Frazelbin goes ahead and makes the pitch. 5 4. That's a possible error. Lopes will swing. 6 6. That's a ground ball to the shortstop. That's it to Allman. Allman's error rating is a 10. That's a 15. Again, he avoids an error. And he throws the first to get the out. Out number one. And that is not the first time. That is not the first time that Allman went ahead and almost made an error. Out number one. Here's Bill Russell. Russell is 0 for 3. Almost with an error rating of 10. Anytime an error calls up for him, it's a 50% chance to make an error. He has not done it. Frazelabin will pitch now. 1-1. One, one, hit by pitch. 12. Just missed. No, he doesn't hit him. That was close. Frazzle, Russell will swing the bat. 6-2. And that's going to be a fly out the left. Two outs. And now the batter is Bill Buckner. Buckner is one for three. Frazelbin comes in and gets set and ready to pitch. Five, three against the lefty. That's a blank. Buckner swings. Six, four. Ground ball to third. Up with it is Raider. Throws to first. Side retired. One, two, three for Frazelbin. And the Dodgers are being stymied tonight in a game that they absolutely blew up the Padres in. Eight to one. But it's three to two Friars after eight. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Mike Champion leads off for the Padres. And question is, will he bat? 
It is the ninth inning. I usually can make changes here. Champion is one for three. He's at second base, and the answer is yes. Champion's going to come back. So that'll be it for Champion as the Padres will now make some moves. Coming on to pinch hit will be Willie Davis. 268 average, five homers, 46 RBIs. And taking over at second base will be Ted Kubiak. Kubiak will take over at second. So here is Willie Davis as I go ahead and make my change in the in the lineup here. So timeout for change. All right. So Charlie Huff will pitch to Davis. Top of the ninth, three to two. Huff with the pitch. One, two. That's at the park. Dodger Stadium. Two, six. Fly out to right. Out number one. Dave Frazelbin will go ahead and be pinch hit four, and coming into pitch for him will be Enzo Hernandez. Enzo Hernandez, 256 average, a homer, 24 RBIs. He will pinch hit here for the pitcher. Huff gets set and ready to deal. There is one out. Huff. 1-1 one, one against the righty. Strikeout three. No. Dodger Stadium subtracts the one and makes it a two. Hernandez will not strike out. A 6-5, but he will ground out. And that's out number two. He grounds out the second. Top of the order now for the Padres. Here's Johnny Grubb. Grubb is 0 for, is 0 for 3. He walked his last time up. Two outs now. Huff will go ahead and make the pitch. 6-2. Strikeout. Nine. Yes. Got him. Struck him out. And the inning is over. So Huff does what the Dodgers asked him to do. Get six out. And he did that consecutively. Will we see some ninth inning magic? We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Padres are three outs away from living for another day tomorrow night. The Padres will bring in their closer, and it's going to be Butch Metzger. 11 wins, 4 losses, 16 saves, a 2.94 ERA. He will face pretty much the heart of the order. Ron Say leads off. Say is 2 for 3. He will bat. He has major home run power. Metzger's got to be careful and not give up the bomb. Bottom of the ninth, 3-2 Padres. In a game, the Dodgers won 8-1. And the 10-minute ticker had the score, had the results 2 versus 24. Metzger will go ahead and make the pitch. 6-6. Six, six, that's a blank. Say will swing. 4-1, that's a ground ball to third. Up with it is Raider. Throws to first, out number one. One man down, the next batter is Reggie Smith. Smith is one for three. One out. Metzger trying to keep the Padres alive to at least pitch for tomorrow. Metzger, 1-2, strikeout, 11, yes, swing and a miss, struck him out, two outs now. And now here's Leon Lacey, Lee Lacey is one for three, one out away, the Padres trying to stave off elimination. Dodgers thinking they may have to wait till tomorrow night. Metzger will pitch. Two, four, strikeout, five. Swing and a miss, struck him out. That's your game. The San Diego Padres will live to play another day. They beat the Dodgers tonight, three to two. Unbelievable. Dodger Stadium groans. Ugh. 
The Padres go ahead and beat the Dodgers in a game I actually thought they had no chance with Ojinko on the mound, but the dice went a certain way, and the Padres win this game 3-2. to two. Unbelievable win for the Padres. They stay alive. And the fans here at Dodger Stadium will have to wait for one more day before they can celebrate a playoff berth. Don't go away. Final line score and 10-minute ticker coming right up. For the Padres, three runs on eight hits and no errors. For the Dodgers, two runs on six hits and no errors. Bob Ochenko gets the win. With an ERA of 16.62, he got the win. He gave up two runs in the first inning, and then he settled down big time to at least reach his fatigue batters after three innings of work. And then a home run, a three-run bomb by Doug Rader gives the Padres a 3-2 lead, and the bullpen went the rest of the way to get the victory. Ochenko gets the win. Llewellyn takes the loss and probably can't believe it, and Metzger does get the save. It is now time for the 10-minute ticker brought to you by Fast Score Baseball of Replay Sports. So San Diego stays alive, and they are now two games back. We'll see what happens with the rest of the league. We now go to the rest of the league here, and the games that matter, I will do them last. So we're going to jump a little bit here. So, let's see what we start with. We will start with Baltimore at Boston. That game is meaningless. The Red Sox have already clinched the six. Baltimore is out. Baltimore with a nine. 33, and that is three. Boston with an 18. 12, yuck. Uh, that's only two. So, actually, Baltimore does beat the Red Sox, although pretty much too late there. And the Red Sox right now with that loss will not win a play will win a playoff spot without a winning season. They have 81 losses, so they cannot have a winning season. Minnesota, Kansas City will skip. Detroit at Milwaukee. Detroit with a seven. 65. And that is going to be seven. Milwaukee with a five. 42. And that is three. So Detroit will beat Milwaukee. California at Oakland. We will save that one for last as well. White Sox and Texas. This game has meaning as well. We'll skip that one. Montreal and the Cubs. Montreal with a 10. 46. And that is 5. The Cubs have a 10. 22. And that is 2. So the Expos get a nice little win there. The Expos, however, are going to finish... With over 100 losses in this season. The Expos that year were really bad. Atlanta at Cincinnati. This game means something as well. Uh, San Francisco at Houston. That does will skip Atlanta, Cincinnati because number one seed in the National League is still up for grabs. 
And we'll skip that one. San Francisco at Houston. This game is meaningless. The Astros have clinched the four spot, the four seed. They cannot do any better. San Francisco with a seven, 11, and that's a zero. The Astros have an eight, 63, and that's going to be six. And the Astros will get a victory as they do beat the Giants. But the Mets. But the Mets have clinched the three seed, have clinched the three seed due to the Astros only having one game left, and the Mets have already got 89 wins. And even if the Astros do tie the Mets at 89 wins, because of the Met better board record, which is what I used to break tiebreakers for seeding, the Mets have already clinched the three. Now let's go to some of the games that matter. The New York Mets in Philadelphia. Now, the Mets cannot do any better than a three. The Philadelphia Phillies, though, need to win to try to get the number one seed throughout. Mets have a six, 24, and that is two. The Phillies have a nine, 31, and that is three. There will be no happy recap for my Mets tonight, but the Mets have already done what they could do. As the rest of the season for the Mets is meaningless, the Phillies now have 100 games and now lead the number one seed by one. We'll go to Atlanta and Cincinnati. Atlanta with a seven. The Reds now must win to tie the Phillies again. Atlanta, 64 on a seven. Oh, boy. That is going to be seven runs for the Braves. The Reds have a 17. The Reds have a 17, and the Braves scored seven runs. The Reds need to throw a 52 or higher. No, 44. That's going to be six runs, and the Braves beat the Reds. So a win for Atlanta, and right now the Phillies have a one-game lead for home field throughout the National League. The Yankees have already clinched, however, home field throughout the entire postseason. As BBBB says, rigged. Now we move on to the American League games. White Sox and Texas. The Rangers are two, are, let's see here. The Rangers are three games back of California. If Texas loses, they are out. White Sox with a nine. 51, and that is five. The Rangers have a 15. They need a 35 or higher to stay alive. 41, and that is five as well. We've got extras. The Chicago White Sox have a clutch of two. Texas has a clutch of zero. White Sox with a two plus four is six. Oh, boy. The only way the Rangers can win is rolling a six since ties go to the home team. Are the Rangers still alive? Yes, they are. They rolled a six. I don't believe it. They're still alive. They win the ball game. They beat the White Sox. However, though, with that win, now it depends on what happens with California and Oakland. Because if California wins, the Rangers are still eliminated. So now we will go to California at Oakland. Huge baseball game here. California at Oakland. California wins. If California wins this game, they will go to 83 and 77, and then it depends on what the Twins do. California wins. They eliminate the Rangers. Oakland, however, is two and a half back of the Kansas City Royals. Oakland needs to win to still try to win the division. If Oakland loses, Kansas City is the American League West champions. California has a zero. Here's the roll. It's a 16, and that is a zero for California. Oakland has a five. Do they win this? 55, yes, it's a five. 
Oakland stays alive, California loses. But now, the game that really matters, Minnesota at Kansas City. So the Rangers are now two games back of California. Minnesota is one game back of California, is now a game and a half back. Minnesota wins. If Well, here's the situation now on this roll. No, we can't pull the plug on the Rangers yet. Minnesota at Kansas City. Minnesota wins. They get to within one game of the Angels. If Kansas City wins, if Kansas City wins, they clinch the American League West anyway. So now with the Oakland win, Kansas City must win. If they lose, Oakland's still alive for the division. Minnesota has a 13. 33. And that is four. Kansas City has an 11. They need a 34 or higher to tie or win. Minnesota ready. They got four. Kansas City to the Kansas City Royals. Are they your American League West champions? 31. 31. No, they are not. Minnesota prevails. And we still got three races. We still got three races undecided. Minnesota beats the Royals. So now the standings show Kansas City now a game and a half back. Uh, the, the Athletics a game and a half back of Kansas City for the division title. And now Minnesota is one game back. Texas is two games back. I don't know what game to play tomorrow. Well, let's take a look and see. So let's see we got. Minnesota's at Kansas City. Bill Singer takes on Dennis Leonard. California plays Oakland. Paul Hartzell against Chris Batten. San Diego takes on the Dodgers. Tom Griffin against Don Sutton. I'm not can't play double headers. I can't do it. Not because because I work. I can't do a double header. I want to, but I can't. I cannot do a double header. I'm working. I can't do double headers. Not on not on a weeknight. And I don't want to split. And no, we're not doing a triple header. You guys want my voice to go? I had that problem for a while. Because the Kansas City Royals are playing for a division championship and the Padres are trying to get in the playoffs, the Royals are already in the playoffs. Oakland is already in the playoffs. California is not. Minnesota is not. The Dodgers and the Padres are not. You know what? We had a great game to the Dodgers and the Padres. We're going to go back to the American League. No, I don't want to do it over two nights. One game per night. Let's get this season done. Because the Kansas City Royals are playing for a division championship, that rates higher in my eyes than playoff berths. Tomorrow night, we will do the Minnesota Twins taking on the Kansas City Royals. We will, however, and we will not roll we will not roll 10-minute ticker, of course, until after the game. So tomorrow night will be the Minnesota Twins and the Kansas City Royals, Bill Singer against Dennis Leonard. That will be tomorrow night's game. Wow. No races decided tonight. Two more nights to go. Unbelievable. That is your 10-minute ticker. If your team won tonight, congratulations. If they didn't, there's always tomorrow. Tomorrow, the Minnesota Twins will take on the Kansas City Royals. If the Royals win, they win the championship. If Minnesota wins, we'll see what happens with the get with the California Angels. Brian Patterson, Steeler fan, BB BB, world's worst gamer, G Puck, Zalapsky Smurf, Beatles Eternally, Tenacious Sports, Tenacious Sports. Let's see here. 
Philip Reynolds, Keith White. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Please leave a like on your way out to the turnstiles. Subscribe if you're not done so. And make sure you hit the bell. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay smart. Stay strong. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night. It is the San Diego Padres pulling off, maybe in my opinion, maybe the biggest upset of this year of this season. They beat the Dodgers three to two, and they get another day to live. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And by the way, I'm making this a game of the year candidate only because what the game meant and who was on the mound. We'll see you guys later. Take care.